Dr. Hermann Oberth, who pioneered rocket design during World War II, once cryptically stated, quote, We cannot take the credit for our record advancement in certain scientific fields. We have been helped. When asked by whom, he replied, The people of other worlds. Additionally, according to Above Top Secret by Timothy Good and William Morrow, Oberth's fellow space pioneer, Werner von Braun, echoed this mysterious reference, even including the existence of extraterrestrials, when he stated in 1959, quote, We find ourselves faced by powers which are far stronger than hitherto assumed, and whose base is at present unknown to us. More I cannot say at present. We are now engaged in entering into closer contact with those powers, and within six or nine months' time, it may be possible to speak with more precision on the matter." End quote. Just who were the people of other worlds that Dr. Oberth spoke of, or indeed these entities that von Braun referred to? With only Oberth's quotations, one could presume a possible reverse engineering of alien craft. However, with von Braun's more detailed expose, this possibility seems to be excluded in favor of pertained actual assistance and contact with advanced beings. Many people also believe that an encounter with these beings, along with Third Reich craft built with their technology, was once encountered in an operation known as Operation High Jump. According to certain independent researchers, Richard E. Byrd, admiral of this operation, possibly encountered a hostile, formidable opponent, who he has claimed to have described as fighters that were able to fly from one pole to another with incredible speed. In reality, however, whatever Bird's expedition experienced may never be fully publicly disclosed, as all reports, including Bird's personal log entries, remain mysteriously classified. But the connections between these curious quotations and indeed the rumored encounters by this classified operation are certainly intriguing. Furthermore, Operation High Jump was originally organized by Secretary of the Navy James Forrestal. Interestingly, in 1949, Forrestal was sent to recover from a supposed nervous breakdown at Bethesda Naval Hospital. However, after allegedly ranting to staff about the Antarctic, UFOs, and an underground Nazi city, Forrestal was denied all visitors shortly after he mysteriously died in a fall from his hospital room window. What did Forrestal know? Were his perceived delusional rants based upon reality? According to the legend of the German Vril Society, a secret remote viewing was held in 1919 at an old hunting lodge near Brechtsgaden. During this event, Maria Arsik, a self-proclaimed medium, presented her supposed telepathic messages which she claimed to have received from an extraterrestrial civilization existing in the constellation of Taurus. It is reported that these messages contained instructions for building a circular flight machine. It is interesting to note that German Oriental scholars and occultists alike regarded such mystic teachings with complete seriousness, with well-documented, well-funded, diligent efforts put forth to discover and such individually proclaimed powers and their messages therein into viable technological realities. What happened in the Antarctic? Who were these people from other worlds that von Braun and Oberth spoke of? Did the Third Reich make contact with an alien or possible highly advanced once ancient civilization, allowing them to engineer mystifying technologies? We find such claims, rumors, and fragments of evidence to support such possible realities highly compelling. More than two years ago, a team of explorers led by scientist Vladimir Melikov were on an expedition within the Russian caves on Mount Bolshoi when they made a miraculous discovery. Reports from Russian newspapers at the time indicated that a briefcase and two alien-like skulls were discovered in the cave systems of the Caucasus region. What is amazing about the briefcase is the insignia which can be found upon its front. It is the emblem of the Anunnerbe, once the Nazis' most secret of institutions. Founded by Heinrich Himmler in 1935, their mission was to find evidence that the Aryan race had once ruled the entire world. 
but they also branched into occultism, paranormal research, pseudoscience, and the study of UFOs and weapons development, all due to Himmler's obsession with such things. The strange appearance of the skulls has led to speculation that the Nazis were in contact with aliens. Mr. Melikov was reported as saying the creature is unlike anything known to man. He said among the most mysterious features of the skulls is the absence of a cranial vault or jaws. The eye sockets are also unusually large. He added, even when compared with the skull of a bear, it is hard to think that you do not have in your hands the remains of an alien creature. Paleontologists in Moscow were shown pictures of the skulls. They reportedly dismissed the skulls, saying they could have been exposed to sand for long periods of time, which could have altered their shape. Russian newspaper reports have also recorded other German discoveries in the area, including last summer when Elbrus Hunters found a second suitcase with the Anenerby logo. It is thought to have belonged to the huntsman of the German division Edelweiss, and was found along with a ring showing a soldier in a mountain cap and a Nazi uniform. The Edelweiss was an emblem of the German mountain troops during World War II. Also in 2014, reports said locals in the same area found the burial site of German infantry, believed to have been killed in an avalanche years earlier. What do you think about the finds? Are these skulls proof that the Nazis knew of the existence of aliens? Or maybe that they were even in contact with such entities? The skulls and briefcase are now said to be stored at an archaeological complex in Belovode, a site which stores many historical artifacts. Further studies are desperately needed before they vanish from public view.